Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, OBS and Guide Made Easy. Today I'll be discussing PPROM. PPROM is preterm premature rupture of membranes from 28 weeks gestation age to less than 37 weeks gestation age. So this occurs before the pregnancy reaches term. PPROM complicates 3% of the pregnancies and is the leading cause of prematurity. In the video of PROM, we talked about the etiology, pathogenesis, risk factors, clinical features, and how to confirm the diagnosis and investigations and complications. These features are the same in PPROM. In the last video, I talked about preterm labor being a complication of PPROM. Now what happens is once rupture of membranes occur, there is a 60 to 90 percent chance of the patient going into labor. Now if that occurs in PPROM, that's preterm labor. Preterm labor is from 28 weeks gestation age to less than 37 weeks gestation age before pregnancy has reached term. If a patient comes to you with PPROM and you want to predict the risk of preterm labor, occurring you can do a test that's called phytofibronectin phytofibronectin is a protein that glues the amniotic sac to the endometrium so this is the endometrium this is the chorion and this is the amion and uh, this is the myometrium Phytofibronectin is found between the amniotic sac and the endometrium. It glues the amniotic sac to the endometrium. This is where you find phytofibronectin. Now, phytofibronectin is found early in pregnancy, yes, but it's not supposed to be found between 22 to 35 weeks gestation age. It's only found after 36 weeks gestation age in preparation for labor. So if you find that there's phytofibronectin be between this gestation age, that means there's a risk of preterm labor occurring. That is phytofibronectin. Fetal lung maturity is complete by 34 weeks gestation age. Okay, But if a patient comes to you before 34 weeks gestation age and has PPROM, let's say 32 weeks to 33 weeks gestation age or before this. You suspect that fetal lung maturity has not yet been complete. What you can do to confirm that there's no fetal lung maturity or there's presence of fetal lung maturity is you collect the amniotic fluid for estimation of, for estimation of phosphatidylglycer. Phosphatidylglycer is a glycerophospholipid. It's found in the pulmonary surfactant of the fetus. So if you find this phosphatidylglycer, it indicates that there's fetal lung maturity. Another way to confirm if there's fetal lung maturity is to do a lesser thin to sphingomyelin ratio. Okay, remember lecithin is produced by type 2 pneumocyte, okay? So if the ratio of lecithin to sphingomyelin is more than 2 to 1, I'd say fetal lung maturity has occurred. Some of the risks like complications are more in PPROM than PROM like oligohydraminous. This is probably because the patients start draining from an earlier gestation age, let's say 33 weeks gestation age, 32 weeks gestation age. So by the time, let's say they reach 37 weeks gestation age or 34 weeks gestation age, they've already lost a significant amount of amniotic fluid. And because the membranes have been ruptured for this long, let's say the patient was 30 weeks gestation age and you delivered the patient at 34 weeks gestation age, this is a huge gap. So the membranes have been ruptured for some time, so they carry a risk of chorioamnitis. And the risk of limb contractions is uh, the risk of limb contractures is because of oligohydraminous. The fetus gets compressed as the as it's descending downwards and there's also risk of prematurity and risk of pulmonary hypoplasia because of one oligohydraminous and probably they go into preterm labor before the fetal lung maturity has occurred 
So there's risk of pulmonary hypoplasia more in PPROM than PROM. And there's also increased of preterm labor and increased intraventricular hemorrhage, respiratory distress syndrome, and necrotizing enterocolitis. This is because of prematurity. The aim in PPROM is to deliver the patient at 34 weeks gestation age because you're trying to buy time so that the fetal lungs mature. If it's before 34 weeks gestation age, delivery is only taken when chorionitis develops. Otherwise, del delivery is at 34 weeks gestation age. But delivery can also be taken when the fetus is getting compromised, like this fetal distress, okay? If the patient presents to you between 35 to 36 weeks gestation age with PPROM, you do induction of labor if there's been no spontaneous labor within 24 hours from the onset of labor. Because in this case, fetal lung maturity has obviously completed. We said fetal lung maturity is complete by 34 weeks gestation age. But if the patient is between 32 weeks to 34 weeks gestation age, you give them steroids. Steroids improve fetal lung maturity. The commonly used steroids are either dexamethasone, or betamethasone. The benefits of giving steroids are, one, it improves fetal lung maturity, reduces the risk of neck, reduces the risk of intraventricular hemorrhage. Okay. And you put the patient on antibiotics to prevent chorionitis. It's a prophylaxis for Chorionitis. So the antibiotics commonly used are either amoxil or erythromycin with flagell. The bacteria you are worried about in patients with PROM is group B streptococcus, GBS. You can also assess the amniotic fluid for fetal lung maturity. Now, if the lecithin to sphingomyelin ratio is more than 2 to 1, you can deliver the patient immediately. But if the results indicate immaturity or fetal lung maturity is not known, you can do a test for lecithin sphingomyelin. You deliver the patient at 34 weeks gestation age after giving steroids. And then you consider transferring the patient. The patient in this case is the fetus. We mean transferring the fetus in utero to a good uh, facility where there's a good uh, neonatal intensive care unit. If the patient is between 28 to 30 weeks gestation age, this is a small pregnancy. So you give steroids and antibiotics and also advise them on bed rest with bathroom privileges. You don't want this patient to just be moving up and down because they'll be losing amniotic fluid and also in that carries risk of cord prolapse and there should be a bathroom nearby so that they don't move around a lot and pelvic rest pelvic rest we mean no coitus with partners if the pregnancy is less than 28 weeks gestation age and the pregnancy is 26 to 27 weeks gestation age you can give chance to this patient to carry the pregnancy to 34 weeks gestation age, but it's associated with increased risk of preterm labor, chorionitis, and the other complications we talked about. So you give the patient steroids and antibiotics. But if the, le if the patient is less than 26 weeks gestation age, you should weigh the benefits against the risk. Because this is a small pregnancy and it carries a higher risk than a patient who's let's say 32 weeks gestation age so either you consider waiting to deliver the patient at 34 weeks gestation age or terminate the pregnancy there's a window of managing the patients with peep home as an outpatient this is for patients who are compliant understand the risks that peep home comes with and warning signs warning signs of let's say fever tachycardia and uh, abdominal pain indicative of late uterine tenderness these are warning signs for chorionitis
And if the patient has no signs of labor, and if you observe the patient after one week of admission and the patient is okay, vitals are okay, and is a stable patient, you can allow them home. But you have to tell them to come for antenatal care every week. And you have to do cardiotocograph twice weekly. And you tell them strict pelvic rest. No coitus. Amnitis is inflammation of the fetal membranes due to a bacterial infection. The organism we are worried about in chorionitis is GPS. GPS is group B streptococcus. This is because it's commonly associated with early neonatal sepsis, uh, meningitis, and bronchopneumonia. There is increased risk the longer the membranes remain ruptured. Okay, so in PPROM, I say that because PPROM occurs early in pregnancy, the risk is higher in PPROM of chorionitis. Signs and symptoms of chorionitis include maternal tachycardia, maternal fever, fetal tachycardia, foul smelling lycra. Foul smelling lycra is foul smelling amniotic fluid, uterine tenderness. So, a maternal fever of more than less of more than 38 degrees Celsius, fetal tachycardia heart rate of more than 160, and the maternal tachycardia a heart rate of more than 90. Okay, so management of chorium 90 is is you do a high vaginal swab for microscopic culture sensitivity because you want to culture the organism involved because sometimes the antibiotics you put the patient on might not work for chorionitis so if you culture the organism and do a sensitivity test it will tell you which antibiotic the organism is sensitive to and you can do a full blood count in the full blood count you are looking for signs of uh, sepsis like leukocytosis and you put the patient on a broad spectrum IV antibiotics and if there's a risk if the chorionitis has uh, carried too much risk to the fetus take the baby to a neonatal intensive care unit for antibiotics and screening of neonatal sepsis meningitis and other like the end of our lecture on prom and p prom in the next video i'm going to talk about preterm labor don't forget to subscribe to this channel thank you guys